Just wait. No, really, could you wait a minute? Hold it. Hold that thought. Shh, wait, okay? First I gotta check. He's bugging me. Hold that thought. We're going to talk about authority. You know, kind of like who's in charge? What's in charge? It's a King James Bible. It's the Word of God. This is my authority. And if it were a scroll, I would hold it up and I'd say, Yeah, I die. I got the Torah. I got my Torah. I got my T O R A H Torah. I got my Torah. Mazel tov. So the word of God, the Bible, is your authority. <gasps> but which word of God? Hmm. The Living Bible. The Ten Mitchell Bibles. Hmm. The American Standard Bible. The New International. Oh my God. Dare we say? The new improved King James. Hmm. I think we have a problem, Houston. It's a book. It's a Bible. Whatever Bible you got in your hand, don't you think that God could do it? Use it? Move it? Choose it? No? Okay, hold on. Don't. Not now, God. Just a minute. I'm busy. I gotta exercise my authority here on the Word of God. You see, it's very easy to make something inanimate, adamant. In other words, is the book itself your authority? Or is the person of Jesus Christ your authority? Okay, Lord, you can take over. In other words, when I have a personal relationship with Jesus, I can ask him because I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not my own understanding. In all my ways I acknowledge him and I let him direct my path. But if I'm choosing to use my own understanding, if I'm seeking to provoke and invoke my sense of reasoning, then guess what? I have the school of Nachmanides. I had the school of Dallas Theological Seminary. I am Multnomah. I am a Catholic. I have clergy and seminary. Boy, they, I am not either one of these. I just gotta go with my rabbi. <laughs> Please. Somebody deliver me. The point is, your personal relationship is what makes any book, even a jackass or a donkey, speak to you. God had a sense of humor when he used Balaam's mule, because he wanted you to understand, you can't worship the book. I'm sorry, it's pretty cool, but the cover's torn. You can't treat it like... You can't tear a page out, because you can. It's not going to condemn you to hell. You can't treat any personal book that way, no matter how much you love a certain style or version, because then it becomes an idol. It becomes worthless because it's no longer the means by which God can use it to inspire you with, because he will inspire you. He will connect the dots. That's what inspiration means. He will come to you and talk to you directly. Might even use one of these. Don't mess with me. The Holy Spirit might come after you. But a lot of times people use devotionals or they use their pastor said, or the rabbi said, or the priest said, or 
God knows who said. Or, thus saith the Lord. You know, every time I hear a prophet in that kind of like, you know, the prophecies movements, you know, where they always have these prophets and the apostolic word of faith movement and all these other movement, 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 movements, you notice that they're always moving, that they've never got a place to just stand still and not be moving. But they always say, thus saith the Lord. Didn't they ever read the Bible where it warns you about anyone that says, thus saith the Lord, they ain't the Lord saying it? I mean, maybe I studied my Bible too much. And I found some things in there that let me know, you know what? I don't think the prophets talk that way anymore. <laughs> Not after God warned them. But modern people with the gift of prophecy, for some reason, they seem to think that they really are doing it the right way. But that's what God tries to tell you today in his word. Your authority is the word of God. And the word of God, who is, not what is, the word of God, Jesus. So you see, Jesus, we learn about through the word of God, the written word of God. But the person of the word of God, by way of his spirit, is what brings the word of God to life. It brings us light. It brings us joy. It fills us. It feeds us. It infuses us. He trains his old noggin up here because, guess what? It's a little hard-headed sometimes. And it likes to do its own thinking. But you know what? Whenever you're thinking on your own, that's called stinking thinking. Because, yes, we have intelligent faith. But you can never tell me this. And as much as I'd love to you know, debate this issue, but people like to tell me, God will never contradict anything in here. Oh, please. He does it all the time. He did it in there. <laughs> Are there any contradictions? No, they're not really contradictions. They're, they will contradict what you are saying. And God does that all the time to people that like to make God out to be what they say he is. But if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, leaning on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, letting him direct your path, you'll find that the book is complete. The book, whether it's in King James, even NASB, even NIV, and even in any V that you want to put there, as long as it's in your hands and you're reading it, God could use it. Because he can also use the devotional we're reading today, day by day, with Tozer. Because it's his spirit that makes it the word of God. And it's not that it's without errors or error inerrant or error free or error rude. I can tell you this. This word of God is error. Because I found a misspelling. But but, but 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 that's not what I mean. Well, then say what you mean and mean what you say. Well, I mean the, the in its original. Oh, so I'm not holding the original? Well, yes you are. No you're not. Well, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Jesus speaks to you. That's the point. So how he does, when he does, the way he chooses to, accept it. Don't go out and try to beat someone to death with a book. You're not worshipping books any more than the Jews are worshipping scrolls. Well, maybe they are sometimes. <laughs> Boy, they God, I think that Moses got us a little carried away with just the Torah. <laughs> uh uh oh oh ee ee ah 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 ting tang wo wo ding ding we've got the oo ee's oo ah ah's in all of Christendom and in all of Judaism and in all the religions because there's always it's not one set vehicle that people have used but people are involved so there's always a variety and God works through that variety to bring unity of faith knowledge of himself in one way and one way only and that's by the spirit of god as jesus was raised from the dead by that same spirit as jesus himself said i will send the comforter to you other than that you're going to have divisions and you'll create those divisions when you make anything else other than jesus the unifying factor it's not about the inerrant word of god it's about the word of god 
and the Word of God has one title, one person that fulfills it, Jesus. Tozer, the word of authority by which we can die, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having given them afar off and were persuaded of them, from Hebrews 11.13. There is not one word published on the North American continent today that I would want to die by. If I knew that tomorrow evening was to be my last, and that I would never see another sunrise, there isn't a newspaper published anywhere in the world that I would want to see. There hasn't been a book published this year that I would want to read. There hasn't been a word uttered in the United Nations that I'd want to hear. There hasn't been a television program made. There hasn't been an iTunes developed. There hasn't been anything other than what I would want to hear, because I am not interested in all of these things. There is no authority anywhere. Everybody is writing and everybody is talking. But for dying man, there is not one word of authority anywhere except as you hear the sure, true, terrifying words of Jesus Christ. The only authoritative word ever published is that which comes from the Holy Scriptures, as it is breathed into life to you by the Spirit of God. Holy books that have been compounded out of all the high, fine, lofty thoughts of mankind since the beginning do not change the basic facts or the basic problems. Truth is still true, and Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus alone could teach, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. You are responsible to the light and to the authority of the word of God as God gives you His Spirit to lead you by His light to the place to understand His Word. You cannot hide behind the differences of opinions of men. You cannot hide behind church politics. You cannot hide behind theology. You cannot hide behind philosophies. You cannot hide behind any other thing that sounds right, that looks right, that feels right, that teaches right. Because in rightness, the only place you can be is with Jesus himself. Jesus is the Word of God. If you quench the light and dim it down, how great will be the darkness. Whenever you see theologies broadcast to bring people into church, or doctrines made more important than the person, then you know there's a reason why they're changing things to make it easier. And it's not because they're developing a personal relationship for someone to know God, but rather for someone to know about God. So whenever you can tell God, sorry Lord, you need to wait a minute, I need to talk to these people, then you're missing the point. Because the reality of what Jesus said the bloodness of what Jesus came to do was to make this real, to bring it to life, to make it leap off the pages as though they were a communication device, as though this itself was something so uniquely designed that you could use it like a two-way communication system. Two-way, not one way that you could read it and that you could know that you're speaking to God and God is speaking to you. Looks like a book. Reads like a book. Feels like a book. But the things that are unseen are what reveal the reality of the things that are seen. And the Spirit of God the Spirit of Almighty God Himself, the Holy Spirit, will bring light, will bring life, will bring a personal, dynamic, individual, customized book. Customized. Customized. Not generic. He'll take the book you have in your hand and custom fit it for you. Because you know what? He's a master craftsman. You know what you do when you want really good expensive boots you get them custom made for your feet because they fit you do you know what the holy spirit does with the bible 
with a book of books, with something you have in your hand, whether it be that devotional you just read, or whether it be this Bible I have in my lap, or whether it be that donkey that's out there braying at you in the yard. Maybe your cat. Please don't bring up cats. <laughs> or dogs. Never mind. But you know, if God is so customizing it for you, do you not realize that that's what the Word of God is? When it's custom fit for you, then it is an error. It makes no mistake. It was made for you. Why argue with someone else? It's been customized for you. Leave them to God and the Holy Spirit to lead them as they read and as they apply it to their life. It may not fit exactly what you're wearing. But then again, if you've got a size 10 shoe, I'm not sticking my size 8s in them. But, then again, maybe my feet are size 10. And maybe you're the size 8. Let's leave it to God to direct. Because He is the Word of God. Personally to you. And it has to be personal. Because if you just treat everything as generic, all you're doing with this book, all you're doing with these pages, all you're doing with the Son of God is making a religion that no man can live up to, that no man can do. Because you're the one that's making it, and it's not God, and it's not true. We will one day be unified. We will be one in the Lord, one in the Spirit. Till then, yes, divisions come, but you can rise above them if you rise with Him and as you make Jesus personal to you. It's the only way to make the difference between a book and the Word of God. It's the only way to make it real. It's the only way to live life.